before we get started, let's hear from our sponsors, SF Film. You know how much we love movies and documentaries. Our friends at SF Film are hosting their annual Doc Story series on December 3rd through 6th, and this year it is all virtual. The documentary film series features the year's best nonfiction stories and conversations with rising and award-winning filmmakers. For the bitch talk doc lovers, Doc Stories has something for everyone. Get a Doc Story series pass for $55 or become a supporting member of SF Film for $100, which includes the pass. Doc Stories live talks cover topics like investigative journalism, filmmaker and subject relationship, and the importance of political documentaries. Your Doc Story series pass includes access to watch all films in the program. Go to sffilm.org to get your Doc Story series pass today. Happy viewing! Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. I'm Erin. That's Ange. Hi. That's Char. Hello. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com where you can sign up for our monthly e-news. For behind the scenes videos and two minute clips of our interviews, head to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You can find us every other Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. at bff.fm. And if you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For the love of God, do it. It really helps. All right, guys, we are back at Sundance covering the incredible documentary Coded Bias, which is has rave reviews. We loved it. It's such an important time for us to be learning more about this subject matter. Um, and we sat down and had a really great conversation. Yeah, uh, we had the director. Well, hold on. She's the director, the screenplay writer, and the producer, Shalini Kantaya, on the show. And yeah, this is a game changer film. And I'm so glad it's getting all of the accolades and um, all of the screenings it has, I think not only across the country, but across the world. So so enjoy our conversation with Shalini. And because we're at Sundance, you will hear our third co-host, Mr. John Wildman. So enjoy. host John Wildman here with my co-host from Bitch Talk, Aaron Lim and Angela Tabora. And the segment right now is going to be about coded bias. We have with us the director, Shalini Kantaya. Shalini, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, we, we start off by, by <laughs> letting you give first dibs on telling us about the movie. Well, Coded Bias uh, follows an amazing woman, MIT Media Lab researcher named Joy Balamwini, who figured out that facial recognition technology, commercially available facial recognition technology, doesn't see dark faces or women with as much accuracy as it sees um, other faces. And so um, the film is about how her journey to sort of uncover bias in the algorithms that govern and impact our lives and sort of her journey to push for legislation and to make meaningful change around creating ethics in the AI technologies that will shape our future. And how, Shalini, did you get involved with this story? Because it's one of those things where I think all of us watching it were like, yeah, yes, of course this is happening, but how do you uncover this information? Well, in fact, really quickly, let me just say, routinely we only have a couple hosts per segment, uh -huh. but all three of us <laughs> oh. were so yes. yeah, we're like, no, this film yeah. that we had to all join in. We need yeah. to be part of this conversation. <laughs> we're like, all of us, please. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because it affects all of us differently, Absol right? Absolutely. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, I am sort of a, a science and science fiction fanatic mm. and so I watch a lot of dystopian science fiction <laughs> so I I feel like I know how to recognize a plot for a dystopian science fiction when it happens in real life <laughs> <laughs> so every day <laughs> every day is what you're saying every, every day, day like, exactly yeah, yeah. and so um, I was a TED fellow and I started sort of hearing these talks by these amazing sort of outsiders and rebels in technology, mathematicians and data scientists like Joy Bolamwini, like Kathy O'Neill, the mathematician, Zainab Tufeki, the techno-sociologist, Meredith Broussard. And I realized that there was a canon of sort of women and voices of outsiders in tech who are really calling for meaningful ethics around uh, and preventing AI harms. And so I really wanted to, to get involved with that. But really what drew me to these to this story are these women. 
um, I didn't know actually that I was making a film about women. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just happened to be. Yeah. It just happened to be that way. That most of the people that I found that were, um, you know, both had this unbelievably quali- these there are seven PhDs in my in my movie right yeah and yes. so <laughs> no they're kidding. incredibly um, um, well researched professionals and at the same time get humanity mm-hmm. and um, and so I began to see that inclusion and we've seen that in the film industry conversation and other conversations that inclusion is not a box that we check. It's not if it's pretty. It's not, oh, this will be good for the pictures. It makes us more competitive. It makes us better at shaping the technologies of the future. And it makes sure that these technologies are optimized for all of us. Mm-hmm. And yeah. yeah, and I think that is the biggest issue is that AI is not working for us. Mm-hmm. And it, we can quite easily make that happen, but it's not in the best interest of the people in power. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. I think that what we see and, and what Amy Webb sets up in my film so well is that we see AI, the people, uh, the countries leading AI are the U.S. and China. Mm-hmm. So we see two really different models of how AI is developing. And we're talking um, a power that is going to reshape the world. And in China, you see a country that has no regard for personal data um, or hum- little regard for human rights. And you see um, them having unfettered access to um, and the way that they're using it as a form of social control. Here in the U.S., um, I feel we're dealing with a few things. One, the clear and simple fact that big tech has too much power in our society Mm -hmm. um, and that we need some balance to the unfettered power of big tech and that this power is in the hands of a few and that's dangerous in a democracy. And so what I see in the U.S. is that these technologies are being um, kind of used for commercial purposes to sell product. But w- unless our government has a policy in the same way that <laughs> other countries are having a policy around not just protecting its citizens from basic common sense stuff like surveillance, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Stuff that just should not happen in the context of a, of a free and open society. But also um, that we should actually be leading the technologies of the future, and that we should be baking in democratic values and culture into the the technologies of the future. And um, Joy in my film says, we are, um, and I'm paraphrasing here, we're we're going into the future sort of, into the future of technology um, sort of overconfident and underprepared of the future. And there's a lot of people who could get hurt. And that's what I learned in the making of this film. I do want to throw in that if um, if Joy has a fan club, I would be happy to be starting. <laughs> yeah, we are I, a big fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, um, but I also wanted to, to commend you on the documentary because there are so many ideas that are distilled within this, mm-hmm. and 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 frankly, you could have made a separate documentary on three different tracks mm-hmm. within this. And but it is so clear, mm-hmm. and you know, and 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 regard whether it's the the to just flat out racism um, that's baked in uh, to, to AI or whether or not it's, do we even want this in the first place because it's so dangerous, um, you, know, you know, on its outset. And those things dovetail so, so well. You've, you, you have done that. Talk about the challenges of keeping it straight. Of keeping uh, of, of, of keeping those stories straight, so so uh. so so we have we don't have a nine hour movie, <laughs> and so people like us that don't have PhDs can follow. Right. <laughs> um, I will say narratively, this was a beast. Yeah. <laughs> um, as a filmmaker to craft, I mean, there's a reason why it took them dissertation work to sort of get to these things. And as a filmmaker, I was quiet a long time, and I had to take in a lot of information. I didn't, although I sort of. I'm a tech geek and sci-fi fanatic. I don't have any advanced degrees in AI. I don't work at a think tank. And so I really had to take in a lot of information and just use human discernment to say, how, how do we tell this story? And for me, I think the challenge of a, of a filmmaker is to tell the emotional story, the personal story. I feel like when we talk about tech, 
we talk about it in such a disconnected way from our humanity. And that needs to end. We need to start talking about tech in, the, in our information systems and in our healthcare systems and our prison systems and, um, and just have that dialogue. And I think that um, what gave me such a great arc to the film is Joy herself. Mm-hmm. That Joy herself sort of starts off as this, you know, kid at MIT who wants to make cool tech and art projects and can't get the facial recognition camera to see her face and then starts to uncover a little bit and a little bit more and sort of through her I sort of bring in all these voices of discovery because I want the audience to know the scope of this issue I think it would have been much easier to make a facial recognition technology film Mm -hmm. but I really wanted to sort of show people the scope of the way these invisible mathematical equations are reshaping our society and for us to just become aware of even that little nudge that the algorithm gives Mm -hmm. us all the time what's in our news feed what would you like to watch next next on netflix Mm -hmm. and what are we giving up um for the price of efficiency and mm-hmm. optimizing mm-hmm. when we start to outsource human autonomy to machines. And wherever that line is for you, I hope that Coded Bias will help you at least question sort of, you know, some things about the way these algorithms are impacting your own life. And I think my final question for you, Shalini, is how are you using technology different uh. after... <laughs> I, making I think this film <laughs> for the film I probably have to go back on social media <laughs> uh, or you can pay someone to do it for you um, I'm almost completely off social media really in terms of that I'm much but to me it's much more this awareness of this invisible gatekeeper to me it's 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 not the AI systems we see it's sometimes the AI systems we don't see that we're not aware of that um, you know, I, I met someone at a TED conference and he was the commissioner of schools and he didn't realize that AI had been introduced to grade standardized testing on the essay portion of a test that had real consequences for students. Mm-hmm. So a student like me um, who grew up in an immigrant household, my, fir- my mother's first language wasn't English, came to college with a very small sort of vocabulary starting out but had a whole lot of passion, right, maybe would not have had an opportunity. Right. And we would have never known that I was denied an opportunity because some AI somewhere decided something about me. Mm -hmm. And so that is what we all need to be careful of. And so for me, it's just opened up my eyes to the ways these invisible gatekeepers are are making decisions that change the destinies of human beings. Mm. Well, we clearly think, I mean, this is a devastating doc. Um, I, and, and in fact, they, uh, the, they, they were making fun of me because <laughs> as I was watching the film, I actually took the facial recognition off my phone. Um, that, that's that, that's how devastating the doc was. And I told him it was too late. But yeah, it's too late. But, <laughs> Sorry, John. Yeah, e for, you get an E for effort. But, <laughs> but, I, but, but I just want to thank you, you really quickly before we go. I just want to thank you. I'm, I'm really proud that women are leading this fight. Oh, uh, so thank you for your work. So. Yeah. Thank you so much to Shalini for coming on and speaking with us. And shout out to Joy, who's the subject of this film, the MIT researcher, who basically figured out this problem all by her lonesome, working her ass off. And, uh, you know, I love how women are, again, leading the charge for our civil rights. Yeah, and if you want to catch this documentary, which we highly recommend you do so, it will be screening at DocFest, which is part of SF Film, on Saturday, December 5th at 6 p.m. And just a big shout out again to SF Film and supporting this episode and a couple other of our uh, previous episodes. So big shout out to them. And uh, like I said, catch it on Saturday, December 5th at 6 p.m. during DocFest, uh, which is a part of SF Film. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. If you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For more information about us, you can head to bitchtalkpodcast.com. This podcast is created, hosted, and executive produced by Aaron Lim. My co-host is Angela Tabora, a.k.a. Captain Party. The show's edited by producer Shar. We're powered by GoTo Productions. <laughs>